this is the first video of 2024. At least I think it's going to be. That's what I'm planning on. We're kicking off this year with, yes, a head wrap. I went into new hair goals in my... What was the video I did? It what Oh, December favorites. Yes, December favorites where I was speaking about growing the hair and that process involves wearing more protective styles. I have my hair twisted and I got it wrapped. This is from Melanin Hair Care, but you probably clicked on this video to get into the rankings. Yes. If it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia and I film several beauty videos, one of which being Pat McGrath ones. I love Pat McGrath Labs, although I did create a video stating how her first three motherships and all the way through Divine Rose 2 were like her best and everything after that was was not that. But we're still going to film a rankings video focusing on the quads. And interesting, the quads have evolved and so has my opinion, as I do have a video listing my top five. Now, I didn't see that video, so I'm not entirely sure if this will align with the choices I made in that one, but it's okay, it's okay. I knew my opinion was gonna change. It, it was just natural when it comes to these ranking videos. And let me just say this, I love all her quads. I just love ones more than others. And that's what we're gonna go over today. We have 12 in all. And with the 12 quads, what am I looking to accomplish with this video? Number one, sure, if you had your eye on some of these, probably not best because some of these are no longer available. I'm sorry. Number two, which is the dominating reason is if you have these quads and haven't used them, perhaps this will serve as a resurgence for your love, of your love for these quads to use them again. With that said, kicking off number 12. And this was a tough one because it's not like I don't like this quad. I just find myself not wearing it as often because it does have a color story that I have to be in the mood for. It's specific, you know? And this is from the Celestial Divinity Holiday Collection that released in 2020, Fleur, Fantasia. I know, I know. Fleur Fantasia is an underdog palette because you see this initially. My apologies, the light is taking away of some of the color. It's a pastel dream, 100%. And you can definitely create looks more so with a little bit more body with this metallic. It's a duochrome, it's pink, but it has really nice color. You could place that on the lid and then feather the edges with that peach. But because of the limited depth here found in Fleur Fantasia, it could only take you so far. And it's only gonna take you into that specific spring-like fresh look with the eyes, an advantage you have with Fleur Fantasia. However, is you can use this eyeshadow as a blush, 100%. I can demonstrate that now. Grabbing my soft cheek, I could place this lower on the cheeks, right, for that more peach effect. And for that, listen, that's how Fleur Fantasia just grabs some extra points. Whenever you can use an eyeshadow palette on your face, in addition to the eyes, that's a clear advantage. And you also have this peach color you could place on the cheekbones. But see, I, f I rather use Fleur Fantasia on my face than on the eyes because I feel it has a greater impact on my complexion versus on my eyes, I would have to pair it maybe with a pencil or dip out and use a, a deeper mat to create a little more contouring and structure through my crease and not just rely on this peach shade because it will be very light, right? But that's a look. 100%, but just as I showed, this can double as your, your cheek moment if you wanted to go super spring-like, monochromatic, 100%, but that is, a, that is a specific look I have to be in the mood for, and one that I don't think I would wear often. I would wear, but not as often as the other quads in this lineup. So we're kicking off with number 12. I hope you're not too upset with me, and let me reiterate, Number 12 or the 12th spot does not mean this is trash. Let me be let me be very clear. This is an excellent palette. I just ranked it lower, okay? Because again, I don't find myself using these pastels as often on my eyes, but if I choose to grab it, we're putting it on the eyes and we're putting it on the cheeks, okay? It's going to be a full event. And you're going to blend out a little more. 
Yes. Okay. We're going. We're doing good. Number eleven from the January release in 2021, where I believe was that when uh, Divine Rose two released. I don't recall. I thought this quad did release with Divine Rose two, but nevertheless, we're looking at 2021, and that is the Divine Rose Lux quad in Eternal. Eden, beautiful palette, but like the reasons I explained with Fleur Fantasia, specific color story, giving you pink, especially this, see this shade here, once you involve it, it takes over the look entirely, entirely. And sometimes I don't want the eyes to appear this color pink. It's a look and I feel it leans more more avant-garde for me, more artsy for me, where, listen, you could take this color, wrap it around the temples, pull it in through your crease, and have it as those bright brackets of pink. And again, that is like a photo, that's a moment, but something I feel, one, including myself, wouldn't reach for for an everyday look, which you could totally do. Listen, people have been now wearing blushes up higher because it does present a more ethereal look definitely because of how the color is placed around the eyes. And for me, actually, I would use that color for that purpose. Instead of pulling it through the crease, I would rely on this mauve instead as my crease color because that has lovely color to it, will provide structure to the eyes, and then use this color as like a blush or like a, a high bracket of color around the brow area. You could also wing it out beyond the lash line to, again, give you more of that avant-garde feel. And then you have this, this shade. I mean, you can't go wrong with the mauve metallic right, with the rose moth metallic all over the eyes. But again, it's a little more monochromatic, but it does have the, the capacity to create something a little more interesting, which is cool, but I don't know if I wanna go that route for every day. I'm not entirely sure, just as a offshoot scenario, if I'm waking up six in the morning, <laughs> I gotta be somewhere, but I have to look presentable, I don't know if I'm gonna be using this palette. I'm not sure if I'm gonna throw this color on all over the place. If it calls for it, if, if, if I'm attending an event, if I'm performing, or the dress code was like, look like a flower, for sure, or even Fleur Fantasia, absolutely, but not so much for every day. That's why I'm placing it at number 11. It has its strengths, as I outlined, but in terms of everyday seamlessness and it serving you easy glam, I don't think it has that capacity like the other quads in here, just so you know. Ooh, I gotta be careful with this one because <laughs> she broke. On the number 10 spot from the Celestial Odyssey holiday release, 2021, Deep Space Divinity. So I believe these were the quads that for the first time we saw the change in how these quads were designed. Initially, we got the brand hieroglyphic design and then we changed to just text. I love this. I think this reads a little more luxe, more glam definitely on brand for Pat McGrath, but unfortunately we downgraded to just the text with the introduction of Celestial Odyssey. I think that's the first year when quads were released where we had this design of a palette. The hieroglyphic style was found on the 2019 Blitz Astral Quad release and the following year for Celestial Divinity. All those three quads had the hieroglyphic design. And then when we got into Celestial Odyssey, we got the text. And like I had said, number 10 spot goes to Deep Space Divinity. Now I cannot lift her because this one broke. And you're like, why? Why would you even put this, this quad that just has mattes and metallics? It doesn't have a special shade, okay? It has the, the duochrome, which we've seen this duochrome before, all right? The classic matte club shadow, right? Again, it's easy. If I wanted something smoky, I can apply this all over the lid and then feather the edges with the burgundy matte and that will be it. It will be perfect. And the metallic that broke 
I have to be careful here because my gosh, it's all over the place. I could place this all over the lid and crease and maybe feather the edges with this more red leaning matte and have that like a smoky earthy look. It's the accessibility for me, it's the ease of use. Now, granted, not quite easy to use now because it's completely shattered, but I do recognize, again, the effortlessness of this color story. It's straightforward. You can't go wrong with it. No matter how you pair these shades, it's going to be wonderful. And also, if you wanted to go even more minimal, you could slap on either the more bronze leaning metallic or the champagne one, throw on black coffee on the lash line, and be done, right? If you just wanted a little shading or a little color on the lid, something that has shine, but not necessarily want to go the full smoky route in throwing in that matte through the crease. Or if you wanted to, you most certainly can combine these two and it will be beautiful, right? And what I was saying, yes, I, I'm aware that Fleur Fantasia, from a formula standpoint, I think they're similar. They're similar because Fleur Fantasia doesn't necessarily have a special shade. I think the shades themselves, two of them, both of them being like a duochrome, like a pastel duochrome flip. And you have a duochrome here, but it's not unique. We've seen it before. I just like the tones. I just like the tones in Deep Space Divinity. That's why I had to give it the number 10 spot because again, it's just easy. It's easy to use. It's reliable. It's reliable. And right after that, an underdog palette that many of you had said that they were happy to see in my top five. I don't know if I ranked those top five or I just named the top five, but I included this in my top five. Now it's not even in top five anymore. It got it got bumped down or bumped up, I should say, to nine. Also from the Celestial Odyssey holiday release in 2021, we have Bronze Borealis. I think this is even easier to use than Deep Space and Divinity. That's why it's after. And namely because of this color here. This metallic right here, talk about one and done, all right? I just toss that all over the lid and the crease. And because the texture is incredibly smooth, I could use my Jumbo Blender, which is a fluffy, thick uh, shader brush from my Sony G collection that I could just slap that on the lid, pull it through the crease and be done. If I wanted a little more finishing, then I'll take this matte, which I absolutely adore. It's like a rosy mauve that again, reiterated, again and again on my channel how much I love this shade for its ability to give a little bit of contouring but it not just be a brown shade not a cool tone shade but it has enough coloring to offer up a soft structuring through the crease especially when you pair it with these shades and they're not special we've seen these shades before but to me and why I graded this higher than Eternal Eden is because I find this easier to use in Eternal Eden. I don't mind putting this on six in the morning, okay? This is this is effortless. It's, it's one and done. I could close my eyes, choose any of these shades, and it'll be a beautiful look, 100%. And yes, I did include it in my top five because of ease of use. But then, of course, with the introduction of other quads that are higher on the list in the ranking this one bumped to nine so you're probably wondering well then what in the world is next madam the first one from what i consider to be the golden age of pat mcgrath lab quads was with her blitz astral quad collection that released in 2019 holiday people made a fuss about the price but i think now they're biting their tongues because we never saw these again and i don't know if we'll ever see these again so kicking off this lineup and finding it at the number eight spot is the beloved blitz astral quad in nocturnal nirvana and you're like why is this not in the top five okay it's because yes blitz purple is a little tough it gets dry you really gotta work this shade right you gotta find you know what that was silly other arm you have to find a brush like jumbo blender probably that will pick this up, right? And the rest in here, these astral-like shades, my goodness, I believe this is Blitz Aquamarine, and you could even pair it with Blitz Purple, and also, my goodness, what is this called? I have the card. 
Ugh. Side bend. VR Emerald. That can be paired with Blitz Emerald from Subliminal, right? You could place that over Blitz Emerald. It has that dual chrome flip. It's hard to detect here. And then you have your incandescent gold. You always got the gold in, in a palette from Pat McGrath. And this is gorgeous. But as you can see, you gotta be ready for like the tropical feel when applying these colors. And it and it's effortless. You can apply Blitz Purple all over the lid, then toss on VR Emerald for that little shine and glimmer and that flip, or place Blitz Aquamarine on the inner corner. That, I mean, that could go anywhere. Or you could use Blitz Purple for the halo look and then place any of these shades in between or place VR Emerald all over or even uh, Blitz Aqua Marine all over and just have like that that Tropic vibe that I think about with uh, Natasha Denona's uh, Tropic palette, right? Where she has that light blue as well. I think it's a mint, but it's also like another blue where I remember on a video where she just used that all over the model's eye and it was just gorgeous. But again, not something you would do every day or rely on for every day, but it's fun, right? This is more, I guess, of a supplementary palette that you could dip into if you wanted a little more vibrancy, a little more splash of zest. That can definitely deliver whatever you need in that department. The Blitz Astro Quad Collection is one of Pat's best because what she did is took the four shades that are usually housed in her big 10 pan mothership palettes at the end of the palette. The Blitz shades, uh, the triple zero shades, the VR shades, and the actual shades, and just put them in the quad. If you were the one who just cared about those shades, you had the other six and they were just there, you tolerated them. But if you just wanted the, the fun shades this is what these quads deliver and man it was one of the best things she did for her brand and the only thing i can speculate as to why it ceased to exist uh manufacturing uh, supply chain issues i don't know i don't know but if we could ever see this again if we could ever have blitz astral quads again my goodness the colors the possibilities fam just think maybe if we think about it collectively enough that uh something will happen and then she'll release these again but i don't know because she was pretty successful with her quince as much as i am a fan of the quince not as lux not as lux definitely great for the more general demographic that's not into the motherships as much as we are or those who are in the motherships into the motherships into the specialized blitz finishes that the blitz finish uh, fans are i get it it's fine we have a nocturnal nirvana at number eight which who could be number seven this was hard this was getting a little tough because now we're like we're more than halfway through or, or arriving at the halfway point from the Celestial Divinity 2020 Holiday Collection again. We have Risque Rose. Risque Rose, how's this? I don't know what the official, what's the word I'm looking for? The official finish. I don't know what the official finish is. This, however, was one of Pat's best finishes that gave you blitz vibes, but without the blitz texture, right? If you were not a fan of that, because I get it, people were like, I don't like the actual shades because they're too dry and too glittery, blah. but if you wanted the same sparkle effect, similarly, I mean, maybe not as much as these, I get it, but that's giving something, and I just think it unique because you see it in pan, how it flattens out, but this is what it picks up. I think it's lovely. And so for the reasons I stated why I placed Eternal Eden where I did, this pink could take over, but you got the brown. You got the brown to hold it down. If you just wanted, you could place this all, look at that, all over the lid and crease, or you can place this shade all over the lid, use that as a wing liner, if you wanted to go the pink route, you can definitely place this. Maybe you could take the brown on the outer V, take the pink on the lid, because this is more like a cream to powder formula, which she introduced in this holiday release in 2020. I thought it was interesting. You see the texture there? It's, it's a little more like, I don't wanna say moussey, but it's not a complete dry matte like this shade is. And for our fourth, you know, you can't go wrong with the pink, right? Okay, 
This has a little more depth to it. It's like a, a nice medium rose tone metallic, but I think there's just a little more versatility here. Given even still, you got that medium pink that in the same manner I described when speaking about Eternal Eden. If you wanted to go like that pink route and create those brackets around the eyes, you most certainly can. And then take the earthier brown through the crease, or again, use it as a liner, a wing liner, or just place, what is this shade called officially? Lavendaring, lavender. I need to see more lavendering formulas from Pat McGrath. Even if we don't see the blitz again, ever again, we could see something like lavendering in the future. I think it is a phenomenal formula, easy to pick up with both finger and brush. But to state again, I just think this holds more versatility, even with the inclusion of this pink. You can move around the colors. I think uh, you just have more room to do so without it looking so pink specific. You could just leave out the pink altogether and use this more mahogany brown or more plummy, I would say, plummy mahogany brown. If you wanted to create like a smoky eye, you just place it on the lid, crease, lower lash line and be done. But Risque Rose is fun. Risque Rose is fantastic and that entire quad lineup for Celestial Divinity 2020 was exceptional. And people were disappointed initially because they didn't house any of the specialized blitz shades that we saw from last year. But it was still giving. They were still giving 100%. The color stories were giving. The formula was giving. It was all there. But funny, I won't bring this up until I announce the number one which is the point of why I'm bringing the thing up. These got smaller and I have evidence that the leftovers from Celestial Divinity, whatever was manufactured at the time and is still on sale, smaller pans, smaller pans. I took, I took the photo. Who do we have next? All right, we have, ooh, number six spot. We're halfway there. This release past summer 2023 with the Color Bomb stick, and it is no other than the Lux Quad in Passion Fleur. I like this quad. I do. I like the color of the matte. It's, yes, it's specific like the pinks I've shown, but it has a little more depth to it. It's more violet leaning, like a mauvey violet. It reminds me, what is the name? The shade from Luffy and Rose. Paranormal, I think it's paranormal. It reminded me of paranormal, which one of the reasons why I adore Luffy and Rose. To have this color, this mauvey violet shade that provides beautiful smoke. But I gotta give it to the other metallics in here. There might not be special in terms of the finish, like we see in the Blitz Astral Quads, but listen, this is shiny. This is shiny, as well as the pink. Right, you have your medium rose shade, okay? And then you have your more pastel light pink. This is the winner for me. It grounds it down a little more. So if you don't want it to be as color specific as what I think Eternal Eden is, it doesn't have to be. You could add this more taupey type of metallic and pair it with this matte. If you wanted to go more pink, you could then use the pink metallic instead. But I just remember when I used Passion Fleur, I really liked it. I like the fact that it was more color specific but it was versatile at the same time. It didn't hold me to just one look, one feel. It had a little more room to play with. And I think it's largely due, again, to the tone of this matte, that it's not completely violet, like the pink found in Eternal Eden or like the pink found in Risque Rose, right? It has a little more earthiness to it. While I understand it's not like a brown, I get it, but it's not jarring either. It's muted. And because of the muted quality of that matte, I think it makes it overall, the palette, the quad, more accessible to users. And it it kind of holds your hand a little bit. And I think the formula is great. It's, you can see the swatch is a little on the drier side, but I do think it actually blends out well from what I remembered in that video when I tried it. And again, and it has enough depth that you could use it as a wing for if you wanted. So there, there's a lot going on. And I think it's appropriate to take the number six spot halfway through, which now leads us to the top five. Who is going to kick off top five? Well, and I think it's appropriate to kick off our top five ranking. 
with what released in 2021 with a divine blush collection. And what I also have on my eyes, I didn't want to put my number one choice on the eyes because that would have been too easy. Mm -hmm. So we do have now, I can't lift it because it broke, Voristic Vixen, namely the Venus Influers Lux Quad, okay. This is great. We got the big pans again. The small pans came into play during the Celestial Odyssey release with Deep Space Divinity and Bronze Borealis. We got our bigger pans, which I think, let me see here. Well, it's interesting because the total weight says 4.9. But the weight for, let's say, Fleur Fantasia says four times two grams, which means eight grams. So I don't know if it's because the formula is different and that means it's lighter, I have no clue. All that to say, I have Vuristic Vixen on the eyes and you, listen, you just can't go wrong with Rose Fire Nectar. This is what broke. My Rose Fire Nectar broke, but it has this like, pink neon quality about it when the light shines you can see that pink let's do it this way instead there we go isn't that gorgeous it is absolutely beautiful i love the shimmeries and i actually placed it on top of the metallic shade here i i placed the metallic shade like on the outer part of the lid over this matte you can't go wrong with this taupey bronze right? The Toby bronze is just absolutely to die for. And I took rose fire nectar on top to give it that little pink twinkle, went in with the champagne shade. And then I actually just started the look, started the crease and outer corner with this mahogany brown, that ready brown. I did place black coffee on the lash line. Yes, because I just wanted a little more intensity there. But this is as effortless as I would say Bronze Borealis is with more pizzazz with the inclusion of Rose Fire Nectar, right? Bronze Borealis is only giving you the three metallics and the matte. If that's cool with you, you're like, I'm actually fine with that, thank you so much. But if you want it a little more sparkly arkly, Rose Fire Nectar is just fantastic. And I don't know if it's the same formula found in Venetian Sunrise, which we're gonna get to in a minute when we talk about when it's placed. It's not baked because it doesn't have the baked pan, but it acts like a baked shade. I'm totally down with it. Just like Lavendering acts like a baked shade, but it's not actually a baked formula. The Rose Fire Nectar formula in Voyeuristic Vixen is phenomenal and is pretty easy to use. Although it's a pain, you have to be careful with how you uh, handle this quad because if you toss it around or you're not careful with how you place it in your drawer or whatnot, it will break because the dryness makes it more susceptible to cracking, which is exactly what happened. And my goodness, I'm running out of dancing rolls, excuse me. I have to repress it. I think you just have to use alcohol if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? It's, it's fine. I'm just careful when I open it and I'm careful when I store it. But Rose Fire Nectar is, is phenomenal. This whole color story is fantastic and why I had to place it uh, number five. I would do this look every day, 100%. You can't go wrong with a soft mahogany brown with the pink, although you see the, like I tossed it heavily here on the lower inner corner, just so you can get more of that pink color to show through. I would say it's more coral pink actually. And then you carefully layer it over the taupey bronze. So you can get the bronze smokiness here, but then it goes into, you see that? Number five spot. Number four. I believe this is the palette that did not make my top five. And some of you were like, what's wrong with you? And you're right, I was wrong. I was wrong family for not including this palette in my top five. And that is no other from again, the Blitz Astral Quad Collection 2019 Holiday. Ritualistic Rose, Ritualistic Rose, shame on me for not having this in top five. I don't know if it's because I used it again and I was reminded immediately why this quad is goaded, okay? The fact that, again, all these shades are baked, all right? 
you got this wild astral rose or look at this stop it stop it right now and of course yes you got the gold antique gold 002 fine all right just put it on there hello just put it on there inner corner highlight or you could place this all over the lid and maybe use this one the brion bronze 003 on your lash line but this right here the rose quartz 005 shade all over the lid jumbo blender pick her up jumbo blender get it on the lid or you can even do beyond bronze all over and then toss on a little bit of astral rose orchid so if you were to just start off with this right do i have okay so this is beyond bronze right and i tap astral rose orchid look what that does you see what i mean that is what i'm talking that's why you're right. Why did I not include it on the roster? It's top five now. It's what? Number four? Number four spot. All right. So listen, you're you're right. You can't go wrong with these shades. The fact that you can apply any of them all over your lid. Now, this, I did not read my own list correctly. And you probably already see the swatches from the quad I'm about to introduce for the number three spot. <laughs> <laughs> which probably you're like why would you rate this better than ritualistic rules i'll tell you why i already talked about venetian sunrise and i'll put in the clip where i was gushing over it so i don't have to say it again but let me just film this new introduction to the number three spot and i go on and on about sunset taupe it's because i think it's easier to use than Ritualistic Rose. Ritualistic Rose, because of all the specialized finishes, I understand how one would need or would like a matte. And especially with the drier shades, it's beautiful all over the lid, but I get it. Sometimes you need a little bit of shading. And I think with these mattes, they can definitely hold it down. One of Pat's best quads. With the mixture here, with the matte and the specialized, the Gilded Glamour shade, which you will see let me just let me just add the clip and i'll and i'll be back and i was late to the game as i did not purchase this when the divine bronzer collection dropped venetian sunrise could not be any more of a staple in this entire thing this right here you can't go wrong you can't it surprised so many people i can't even tell you when i did not get this quad because at the time i was trying to put a handle on the how much high shadow was Buying because that's so much, and I said, no, you don't need that because we've seen those colors before, right? But y'all, when you were saying, listen, I know it's basic AF, but the the quality, and when you can nail something that's basic, you don't need nothing else. And this right here, this color right here, let me grab the sunset sunset taupe. To have a taupe on the warmer side of things, okay to have it so it's not orange but it has like that pink Ooh, i love it the rosy taupe the whatever coral taupe i don't know how you would categorize it shade wise but that's where it sits for me i think it is lovely and then with this matte look how soft these shades are my apologies my fingers have all this eyeshadow on them it's just lovely. And this shade here, this is not your typical metallic. This has the going on. And fantastic if you wanted to place this all over your lid, right? Or even tap, a, look at that. That's incredible. The shine, fantastic. Now, because of the shine, it's a little drier, but look at that. It stands up against the actual, look at that. Choo, choo, choo. Fantastic reflectivity. All right, and I think it fairly easy to apply. You gotta be careful though. I would treat this like a, like a natural shade. Don't go willy nilly and just apply a bunch on your lid. Tap, tap. All right, and yes, you have you have the champagne. Okay, you have your champagne metallic. If you wanted a highlight shade, right, or if you wanted to apply this first on the lid and tap this on for a little more warmth and reflectivity, sure. But man, it's sunset taupe really for me brought it in for venetian sunrise and i think for several others who use this palette and who adore this palette when you have that one shade that just grounds it all it leaves it all no matter what it, it's just 
you know what I'm talking about. The one shade, yes, in the quad that just holds it down and no matter how you combine it or no matter how you work around it, the looks are gonna be beautiful. And just the formula alone, solid for Venetian Sunrise. The soft mattes, they're easy to blend, even with this drier shade. Let me get the name of the shade, Gilded Glamour. Gilded Glamour is hitting. I would love to see more Gilded Glamours. I would like to see more of this formula, even in the smaller pans, because as you can see, they gotten smaller from where we started, all right? Let me, let me bring back Fleur Fantasia. This is where we started, and this is where we're at now, okay? Two grams per pan. This, I believe, was 6.5, let me get it here. Well, no, the total quad weight is 5.2 grams. The total quad weight for this, well, I got it from, let me see, do I have the box? Yes, I do. No, four times two grams, that's what it says in the box. Eight grams, eight grams of product. If you do the math, one of the Chromalux pots is three grams. If this entire thing is 5.2 and this entire thing is eight, you got a whole extra Chromalux <laughs> with the original quad sizes. <laughs> but then you start to think, do I need all that eyeshadow in the first place? So I get it. There is a practical argument to be made. Sometimes more product isn't necessarily better. And I think the price has changed as well. I'm not entirely sure on that. I didn't check. You're, but one of you will let me know, I'm sure. So you saw the gushing, all right? Why I had to put Venetian Sunrise at the number three spot is because it's goaded. You can't go wrong with the solid formula. Yes, we've seen these colors before. It is warm, it is neutral, but when warm and neutral is done well, and you have a specialized finish in the mix, there you go. We're down to the last two. This was hard and I might be making a mistake, but it's fine. You can let me know down below like you did with your list of rose. The number two spot, I had to give it to, I had to give the runner up spot to a Blitz quad. And you're like, who are you? The only quad that should take number one should be a Blitz one. Yes, yes, I get it. I understand. But I'm giving it to Iconic Illumination, I am. and. Listen, this rated highest out of all the Blitz quads, just because of its sheer versatility, its overall sophisticated and streamlined, elegant approach to these colors. Blitz Bordeaux, Astral Gold Allure, Blitz Brown, and Bronze Gold 003. The fact that it has the Astral Gold Allure shade where you can apply on anything. Look how that provides even more sparkle. It's like the astral shade from Midnight Sun, astral solstice, I believe. That was more of like a fairy dust silver, but the astral gold allure has a little more gold leaning, so it's warmer. And listen, Blitz Bordeaux, get out of here. Stop it right now. This all over, which I much prefer over Blitz Fire from Mothership 5, right? That is like a an orange red, it has a little more orange in it. This I feel is a little more grounded because of the Bordeaux color. And then with Blitz Brown, listen, all over the lid, you've got to be kidding me. This, please, look at that shine. It's baked, it's not gonna have the same twinkle as the actual shade, but it has a sheen to it. It's like a satin, like a heavily baked satin but more full bodied in color, right? That's what the Blitz formula is giving. And listen, you just, mm. and the bronze gold, this to me was like teetering on, I was gonna say rose gold, but no, it has more copper, but I feel like it's still, like it has that rose gold look to it. You know what I mean? It's, it's sensational. And it's a Blitz quad. So you're getting all the specialized shades in one quad, in one compact. You have the hieroglyphic logo. This at, I miss this era from Pat McGrath. I miss it. And I'm happy that I was selfish and I bought these when I did because we're gonna go into the number one. And I'm not entirely sure if you know already which one that is. And you're probably shocked. Listen, I'm gonna, let me, let me wipe these arms, hold on. 
Woo! All right. I gave the number one spot in this 12 slot ranking list to the Celestial Divinity holiday release Interstellar Icon. I know. Listen, I could or I could already hear you. Why would you award the number one spot to a quad with a repeat shade? Blue Blood is already found in Decadence. I know. These shades for me, especially Divine Dahlia. Divine Dahlia, this one here, has to be one of the most beautiful shades out of the entire Pat McGrath collection. I don't say that lightly, okay? Because I have all her palettes. I have all of her motherships and I have all of her quads. And do I have all of her six pounds? Yes, I do. No, I don't. I don't have the love collection. I don't have the love collection, which is fine. All right, I'm good to go. But listen, Divine Dahlia, I, there's, there's different color pearls in here too. I think there's like, there's like a blue pearl in here that is just outstandingly beautiful. And then you have this duochrome, Hypnotique, okay? You got Hypnotique, which is not the same as what's found in Deep Space Divinity, okay? You could place Hypnotique all over the lid. You got Blue Blood, which is gonna be your metallic, right? It's not gonna have the same finish as Divine Dahlia or Hypnotique. And then you have your Champagne Gold, Golden Polaris. Golden Polaris, I just think it's so beautiful, okay? But this right here, okay, the reason why I awarded Interstellar Icon, my favorite, is because I have a thing for blues and taupes together in one compact, in one palette. And when I wore Divine Dahlia on Fort Photoshoot, and I brought this up in another video, I think I brought this up in my top five video, the smokiness I get from this shade, but to have the different dimension of pearl in here, so it's not just flat, it doesn't appear as a baked satin, but it had such beautiful twinkle, and I could always go in with Hypnotique on the inner corner or the lower inner lash line, or I could just go in with blue blood all over. So there are like many one look moments here, because with the other palettes, I felt the other palettes had to work together to give you a look, right? You had to put in the matte with the metallic, or maybe you could just put in one metallic, depending on. But with this, and you could argue, well, I'm not just gonna apply Golden Polaris. Well, you could. You could just apply Golden Polaris and then apply either Blue Blood, or I could argue you could get a small eyeshadow liner brush and pack on Divine Dahlia. You could go in with black coffee first, maybe, or even extreme black and just tap on Divine Dahlia on the top to have a little extra sparkle and shine on your liner. You could do that. I can't explain what Interstellar Icon does to me in words. It might just be the smokier color story, the fact that it's cool tone, but it has the gems, you know, with blue blood and blue blood, the decadence metallic formula, go to on the lid increase, whip it on. You don't even need a mat, all right? and you could apply Hypnotique on top. So let's see you go in with Blue Blood, right? And I take Hypnotique and that's what it does. It just gives it a little extra pop, but now you have the blue on top. So it has that, that extra shine. You could even do Blue Blood on the brackets, the outer lid and the inner corner for the halo look and then Hypnotique on the center. That's gonna be a look. Or you could go in with Golden Polaris instead. There's because you could argue that Iconic Illumination has the same potential, 100%. The Blitz Brown, Blitz Bordeaux by themselves, all right? And the Ashel Solstice shade, you put that on anything, which I understand, okay, why that in itself should be a reason why Iconic Illumination should take number one because of the, the power, the magic, that is an astral gold solstice, astral gold allure, excuse me. But Divine Dahlia, it just takes that one shade. It, it just takes that one shade 
that wipes out the entire competition. And what I was alluding to earlier when speaking about the pan sizes is when I stepped into Sephora recently and I saw Interstellar Icon on the shelf, the pans looked like these pans. I couldn't believe it. And it was confirmed because I took the photo of Interstellar Icon as well as the box. And the box says 6.5 grams. Whereas on this box says four times two grams. So like I had said before, the pan sizes change and they're two grams each where with this, let me see here, 6.5, it said divided by four. That's 1.62 grams each a product. I'm happy I bought Interstellar Icon when I did because I do adore these big pans. And like I said before, maybe it's not as practical for one person, I understand. But visually, this is on brand when it comes to Pat McGrath. This is what we see in her motherships and what we like to see in her quads. I sure do hope that the motherships I, I don't, I sure do hope that the motherships don't end up with these size pants. I don't know if I'll continue buying them because what's the point? The point of getting the motherships is to have those huge pants. And yes, Selenite Seduction was not Pat's best in terms of the formulas, not having any of the bake shades, but at least we got the big pants, thank goodness. Who knows? Let me not think about it, it makes me sad. All that to say, moving on, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. It took the number one spot. I am sorry <laughs> if you had another one in mind. But I think that's gonna be that's gonna be the ranking. I'm gonna wrap it here. I would love to know what you think down below. What you think about my choices, or if you want, what would your arrangement be? What would your 12 be and how you would rank them? I think it's so funny when you all explain the point of view you're coming from. And I'm like, ooh. You're right, you're right. And I go back and forth, but I just wanted to film it now because earlier today, I wrote out my list and throughout the day, I went to the mall with mom. I thought about my choices and I said, you know what? I'm gonna keep it like that because if I think about it too much, I'll never film this video. I will never film it. And I wanted to finally do so because of now with Passion Floor and Venetian Sunrise, those were my most recent additions to my quad collection. I finally wanted to just say, okay, let's do this ranking video. Those are my picks. Let me know what you think down below. I will see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another ranking video. Huh? Maybe we could do the motherships again? Mm -hmm. Inexpensive food day and many more. Take care and I will see you again soon.